RealAirCulture.com presents Under the Microscope with BioVision Seed Labs. All right, uh, we are here with Holly Gellich, Business Development Manager with BioVision Seed Labs, and today we are going to talk about purity as it relates to seed testing. So tell me, Holly, um, what are the four kinds of purity tests? So today we are going to talk about various types of purity tests and primarily because of confusion in the marketplace and also just to bring everyone up to speed on the, the proper language in order to to get the proper test done at the laboratory. Now, majority of the testing that we conduct is called physical purity testing and that is primarily for the pedigree seed industry. And keep in mind, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency is the organizing body that accredits us to conduct physical purity analysis. So this is done on all crops, right? Anything from soybeans, wheat, barley, oats, canola, a lot of the forages as well, alfalfa, clover, anything that is for pedigreed or certified sale. So what we do in that analysis is it is a numer numerical evaluation of how many impurities there are in a specific weight of sample. So for instance, canola, we look through 50 grams and that is given to us by CFIA. They indicate how much seed, so what is the weight that we need to go through. So okay. for canola, 50 grams. For most cereals, wheat, barley, oats, it is one kg. Flax, it's a lot less. So each product, we're looking at various classifications. And the first one is weeds. And under weeds, there's various different levels. There's noxious weeds, there's primary weeds, secondary weeds. So we, when we find a weed, we classify it into one of those categories, and then we tell you the number of them. So are there five smart weed, or is there 10 wild oats mm -hmm. in that kg? So it's numerical. Okay. Now, also in that physical purity, we are also looking for other crop species as well. So if there was wheat and barley, barley and wheat, we'd say the number that we found. And then lastly, we're really looking at the number of disease bodies. And this is applicable to canola when we're talking sclerotia and cereals, primarily wheat in ergot. So physical purity is just looking for the numerical number. Now, part of another classification of purity, which is accredited by CFIA, is pure seed. And that is a reporting the percent of each of those categories. Okay. And I'm going to use the example of uh, clover. So in the case of clover, we weigh out a specific amount um, that CFI indicates that we're to weigh out. And then from there, then we segregate it into how much is alfalfa and we will give the percent. So it might be 99.5% alfalfa. Then the next category is other crops. So if there's uh, wheat in it or barley, we would we would weigh we would pull them out. Then we weigh it, and it could be 0.2 percent. And then the next category is weeds, and it could be, for instance, 0.3 percent of other weeds by weight again. And the last category is inert, and inert could be uh, broken kernels, it could be chaff or outer hulls, etc. So the pure seed is an accredited test um, that is hosted under CFIA. Okay, and so the difference, the difference, these are percentages versus hard numbers, and when would you ask for one over the other? Like who it uses all, each of them? It really depends on the crop. So when you're talking cereals, it is always on your physical purity. Okay. Uh, when you're talking uh, okay. a lot of the uh, legumes like uh, alfalfa, clover, uh, the grass species such as fescue, timothy, those would be a pure seed percent. And it's all okay. driven by the Seeds Act and the grade tables. So under the grade tables that seed growers and seed companies need to follow, there's no requirement for pure seed okay. for cereals. But under the grade tables for some of the legumes and the grass species, it's in the grade tables that a pure seed percent needs to be done in order to grade it as certified seed, and then affix that blue tag and sell it. Right. Okay. So, and then there's also, of course, varietal purity. So, so what's that about, and when would you do that? Well, there's a number of different reasons to do varietal purity, and from a producer standpoint, it is really identifying if there has been a bin mix-up. So, as an example, uh, a producer grew two different varieties of barley, Metcalf and Copeland, and he uh, the bin wasn't labeled properly. 
So at that point, a sample could be submitted to us and we can then tell them, okay, you have Metcalf in bin one and in bin two, you have Copeland. So it, it, we are, use different techniques and employ various different technologies. Uh, the old, older technologies are protein-based, so we're looking at larger molecule sizes, mm -hmm. uh, but what's now in the marketplace is DNA. So getting right, right. down to either a specific marker um, in barley, for instance, or in wheat, um, or the other one is looking at a sequence of uh, change of uh, alleles, and that is an example of the wheat midge testing that is conducted for those varieties. Okay, and so then then we can move on to the fourth, which would be trait purity. So what what test would that be, and who would get that? Well, trait purity is used as a very broad um, broad expression in a specific um, a, a specific molecule that has been brought into a specific crop. So an example, we'll use canola as the main example because it is so common in the marketplace. So a trait uh, for canola could be a, a glyphosate trait, a Roundup Ready trait, a Liberty Link trait, etc. So what we do in the lab for that trait test is specifically grow the seeds in a solution of that specific herbicide and then we analyze to see the seedlings to see the expression of the trait. So is these are these seedlings resistant to the specific herbicide? So that is a trait bioassay. And so it's specifically grown in the treatment that it is is, is supposed to be resistant to. Another example would be uh, clearfield lentils, clearfield wheat. And those are very important because they are required for the clearfield con confirmed commitment right. through BASF. Now, there's another type of, of trait evaluation that is very much event testing. So the specific event. So we're looking at the event, not the expression of it, which we do in the bioassays, but the actual event is in the genetic makeup of that plant. An example of that is the CDC TRIFID event test that is conducted in the marketplace. So in that, we're looking not for that specific variety, but an uh, event. And, you know, that event is called FP967. So, and it's a GMO event test. So those are really under the umbrella of trait testing. Great. Okay. So now, uh, certainly for farmers and for seed growers and all these sorts of things, anyone who's um, seen any of these results, any anything like that, they can certainly sort of figure out what the difference is between some of these. Because I think for me, it's very interesting to hear the difference when we're looking at trait purity in the expression versus just simply the event being there. I think that's a, a pretty uh, significant difference between those. So uh, great discussion as always, Holly, and we look forward to the next Under the Microscope. Excellent. Thanks, Lindsay.